Welcome to episode number 63 of the Keep Up Podcast, where we make sure your fries are cooked all the way. Mm. When's the last time you had fries, though? Uh, yeah, well, hash browns, does that count as fries? Sure. Okay, yesterday. What if it doesn't? Then maybe almost a week. A week? Yeah, that's a long time. See, this is going to be the whole podcast, folks. Brett has a fidget spinner, and he is spinning it a lot and trying to catch it, do the double hand transfer while it's still spinning. Um, Oh! (laughs) One. You suck. All right. Tony Hawk would not be proud. Here's the deal. I'm ready. Um. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great deal, Brett. Deal or no deal? I don't know. That show is stressful. That show is not nearly as stressful as Family Feud because. What? I feel like Family Feud cheats. Why? Because they say, oh, we asked 100 people about this. But what if the hundred people are like all the same person? Well, then they have to say we asked one person a hundred (laughs) times. Because I feel like some of the answers are not as obvious as they're supposed to be. How loud do you think that is every time I drop it? Uh, Probably super loud. Thank the Lord. (laughs) And we're done. It's gone, folks. (laughs) He's choking. Well, (coughs) I hate when they do like weird substitute answers like there was one question it was something like what's the first thing a man notices notices about a woman or Mm -hmm. something and someone said her butt but the answer that showed up on the board was her poop shooter (laughs) what (laughs) i'm not kidding that can't be real yeah for real why would they do that out of all the things you don't know hiney right booty right poop shooter i know i actually i'm sorry i brought it up and let's move on because it made me so sad that's just gross it was gross and uncomfortable it's okay it's better than meat slinky i guess oh oh <laughs> someone today told me that my watch was big Woo! certainly is it is but then i realized like that's hard to respond to they were like hey that's a nice watch uh-huh cool thanks thanks, thanks. yeah um it's that, a little big that watch looks cool mm-hmm. well thanks I like that watch. Uh huh. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Watch is pretty big. I would still say thank you. Just go with thank you. Yeah, I think so. I think All that's right. the flat response. Like, thanks. Oh, thanks. You know? They're trying big. to offend you. You can show them out the door by saying yeah. thanks. Say you know? thanks and kill them with kindness. Yeah, exactly. That's right. the only way to kill someone. Yeah. I'm going to cough. <laughs> cough you. <laughs> 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 it was such a like. You fought back real hard. I did, and then it was like, still coming. Just like, yeah. Uh, All right, so I'm going to start this podcast with a story. Okay. I mean, it's a true story. Does it start in West Philadelphia? No. Oh, okay. (laughs) Carry on, anyways. It starts in New Hampshire. All right. Um, So have you ever been invited somewhere where you think it's going to be one thing? I've never been invited anywhere. (laughs) Oh, I'm sorry. Brett, you want to just show up? You want to hang out tomorrow? I see. I don't know what to do. I've never had this happen yeah, before. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, that's okay. I'm busy, anyways. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, have you ever been invited somewhere where you think it's going to be one thing? Yeah. And you show up, and it's something way different. Sure. Just sure. Um, <laughs> I'm sure that's happened. I'm trying to think of an example. Or, like maybe you got invited to a party, and it turned out to be a costume party, and you dressed up as yourself. The old costume bait and switch. Yes. No, oh, there's. I can feel a, a familiar feeling of that happening, mm-hmm. and I can't place it. I know that's happened to me. That's before. okay. I was just curious if you knew what happened to you. <laughs> well, yesterday. Uh, well, I'll preface this with a few weeks before yesterday. Okay. Um, I was invited by my friend Nate. Mm-hmm. Thanks, Nate. Uh, for his little birthday shindig, where he wants to go on a hike. Mm-hmm. And uh, all summer, I've been thinking, man, I really want to hike. That'll be fun. That I, I just feel like hiking yeah why not? um so uh initially when he asked it sounded just like a normal hike you yeah. know just like whatever a mile two miles through the woods a little follow, trek. follow a trail you know sure. so i'm like okay that sounds cool the closer we get to the date a little more details start 
trickling Ooh. in about what kind it is. Ooh, so pieces it's of like information. So initially, I thought it'd be like in New Hampshire, it'd be like just a you know cool little thing we sure. go like have a picnic, whatever, like real men do. Right. Um. And so l- little details like oh we're gonna go to Vermont. I'm like okay that sounds cool. We'll go to Vermont. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna hit a few trails. On the way to the trail that I actually want to go to. Oh, that's cool. You know, maybe okay. a good workout. A couple side uh, missions. We're going to climb the tallest peak in Vermont. Uh, the trail is 2.5 hours long. Um, it is 4,393 feet up. So have fun. Huh. Huh. That was like two, maybe three days before. <laughs> <laughs> now, don't get me wrong. That was exciting. Hearing that, I'm like. The tallest peak yeah. in Vermont. That's incredible. It's a challenge. Yeah. So I was very excited. Um, what I didn't realize is, A, how out of shape I really am, <laughs> and B, how dangerous climbing or hiking could be. Really? <laughs> um, well, so the idea was we were going to go climb that peak uh, and see the sunset and then climb down at night. Uh yeah, well, we were going to get some nice pictures. And right. Nate, and Nate got some awesome pictures. Did he? So, mm-hmm. um, so it was going to be me, Nate, Kevin, and Will, two okay. other friends. Yep. Uh, Nate and Will, very good climbers. They hike all the time. Okay. Kevin and I, no. Just, Not so Just much. no. At least it was two and two. Right. So yeah. we, we did in, inadvertently pair up. We yeah. were five miles behind while they were done pretty much wait really <laughs> no no, okay. no. no <laughs> i we, was like man we were far they they went real ahead and uh nate actually had to stay behind because <laughs> we and kevin were just like <gasps> dying the whole time it, we were so slow um so anyways uh so we got to the trail and uh about 10 minutes in yeah i realized this is the worst idea ever 10 minutes in 10 minutes in and i i seriously i was like this i'm so tired i don't know what the heck it was yeah uh but it was certainly a slap in the face because i'm like because I try to work out every day, and yeah. I, I assume I'm healthy, <laughs> but maybe not hiking healthy. Yeah, maybe that's a different kind. I guess so. I mean, it was a lot of, like, steep climbing yeah. up high. Were you just yeah. Gonna... Oh, yeah, I was doing steps or something. <laughs> yeah. so. um, but it was the the mountain itso- itself. It was uh, Mount Mansfield is okay. what it was called. Um, and it was actually set up kind of neat because there are, I don't know, five or six different, different trails, um, and each one – leading to a certain point on the mountain. Okay. Um, and each one varied in difficulty. So there was one called like, it was hell something. All I stuck with was the hells. Cause yeah. that's what we were originally going to go on is okay. the hell's path. Uh, but that they said that was like stupidly dangerous, very difficult to do. And, you know, given me and Kevin don't Why know does anything that even exist for the people who are crazy, who want to do it. Uh, so we took the long trail, which is the same, uh, like time as the hells one, but okay. much safer. Um, limited death. Yes. I mean, I could have died a lot yesterday, <laughs> but, um, but anyways, climbing up it, it's, it was really one of those, uh, like much more about the journey than it was the destination. Although okay. the destination was awesome, yeah, but yeah. I will most certainly remember the climb. Yeah. Um, uh, but it was cool how it was set up. So it started out as like, there were steps and like things people made to make it easier for people to start their journey. Basically. Yeah. So there were man-made steps. There were like specific paths made and all this stuff but as you started ascending the mountain you realize like people either were so tired they didn't want to make anything or nobody's been as high as you have like <laughs> like it's a rare few made it yeah, to the top this so is the first time anyone's been there exactly so it started uh like transforming into like you had to climb over these big rocks and uh like there were there was this huge portion of, of mud and there were a bunch of little rocks you had to jump across to get to the other side okay and if you obviously stepped in the mud it'd be awful and you'd probably fall down the mountain so it was <laughs> there was a lot of cool situations that made me like just think video game yeah. logic i'm like oh okay so it's getting harder um but man was that difficult so what time did you guys start it so we started at five Okay. Um, give or take, like five fifteen or something. Because the goal was the sunset. The sunset. Yeah. So the sunset was at seven forty five. Okay. We got to the top of the mountain at seven forty. Oh man. Me, me and Kevin, Nate and Will got there a little earlier. Yeah. You know, um, probably like seven fifteen ish or something. Crazy. Um, so we got up there and just watched the sunset, but we knew we had to get going because we had to go down the mountain at night, which is highly ill advisable like they said do not go down that mountain at night it is not smart so i mean was it like pitch black it was yeah we had headlamps uh, but at one point (laughs) we got to a certain point where we just like took a break or whatever and we all shut off the lights 
pitch black. Like, there's normal darkness, advanced darkness. That's what <laughs> we were. Like, you couldn't see your hand in front of you even if you, like, put it super close. It was it was scary. That um, sounds horrifying. It wasn't as scary as I thought it was going to be because I assumed, like, I'd get, like, a Blair Witch or, like, I was a, just going to say it's, like, Blair feeling. Witch status. But I think I was so concerned about actually surviving and making it to the bottom <laughs> that I was like, okay, if a ghost gets me, you know, it's not as scary. At least this is over. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that was the dream. The whole time me and Kevin were like, death would be a sweet flavor right now. <laughs> I, I'm ready to embrace it. But, but overall, it was really, it was really a great journey. It was uh, scary and stupid. I would say it's top stupid thing i've ever done so just because you went down during the dark or well i think the mountain itself i mean for someone who didn't prepare at all who so the whole the whole thing was a bad move uh well i got like i said i think it was a good journey but for me personally i was just very ill prepared <laughs> i i assumed it'd be like a nice little hike you know i i knew i'd yeah. get a little tired and uh a little bit I of outdoors action yep but yeah. uh it ended up being at least for my first mountain ever to climb one of the hardest like i could do you know because yeah. it's the tallest in vermont so it sounds pretty awesome though. it was it was it was it was a great day you know we did was it days. as hard going down that's what i was i'm iffy about that really hard going up i i can say that for sure going yeah. down i think it was maybe equally maybe a little less because um you just rolled down most pretty of the much i was just like jump here we go um but our legs were so tired after the climb up that climbing down was difficult because your legs were so like shaky the whole yeah. time um but it was a lot easier to get past certain points that were hard coming up you yeah know? right because you could just go on your butt and slide down or do whatever you had to do but yeah. um but yeah it was just awesome it Dude, was it was great that's pretty sweet but that's what i suggest for anybody who is i guess intimidated by high climbs go for it because just do it because i did it and i'm hugely unhealthy and have <laughs> never done an amateur <laughs> so you can do it uh, but it was real cool it was it was something something awesome well congratulations on your mountain climbing thanks i'm never doing it again never wow well, uh, <laughs> i might do it would that be now you kind of had a taste of it so would it keep you from doing it again i would certainly not try like that that confirmed to me i would never do mount everest i'd never make it i mean it's got to be about the same yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Give or take. I'm sure it's the same. It, it really is. How tall is Everest? 50,000 feet. I have no idea, but I'm assuming it's tall. You don't have to assume. It's <laughs> definitely tall. <laughs> I'd li well, I like to give my opinion, you know. No, that's good. Mm -hmm. It's good. To have, have you ever it. climbed anything? Like, what's the highest place you've ever been? Um, I don't know. Mount Washington? Did you go up in a vehicle or walk? vehicle shame yeah <laughs> i mean we were pretty high though yeah i bet I, I don't know how tall that is but it's like a million feet oh yeah yeah that's that's a good measurement it's like a million million and a half feet a million and a half feet yeah not one and a half million a million and a half of a foot okay and a half of a foot yeah a million so and when a you're half at feet. the top or yeah. when you hit a million yeah you do half a step Th there, there's another good. half yeah okay yeah. not a full step though no 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 there's not enough height height <laughs> does it just end you just hit the ceiling yeah. so what if you're taller than that do you have to like be prone or yeah and just like that's how you do it crawl your way it's up? mostly kids up there oh, okay yeah that's smart <laughs> <laughs> they're the only ones who can make it yeah <laughs> well that's fun uh <laughs> i'm gonna go into stupid questions i think okay fine okay get it stupid oh, my oh what was that <laughs> All right, what do you got? I'm depressed. What are we in, stupid questions? You said you had a stupid question. Is that the uh, new transition for stupid questions? Yeah, something nice. I'm working on. Okay, I'm glad. Um, a little something I'm working on. Hey, hold up. I got a text. Wow. You know what's real stupid, folks? Brett. I don't even need to ask a question. You just look at him or listen to him. <laughs> <laughs> that was smart. Ah, uh, <laughs> uh, okay. Stupid question. What? What, what? What? Does everyone celebrate Christmas at the same time? No. No. Nope. Why? Some people wait till after December to get all the deals. Okay. Have Christmas in January. That's those are the weirdos though. They they're they're smart, but they're weird. Just saying that's the answer to your question, my friend. But I mean, like if if someone let's say california 
There's the time difference. Okay. <laughs> Someone named California. Someone named California in California. Right. They, right now to them, I don't know what time it is, but I assume it's different. You're right. So if I if 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 it's Christmas right now, say I wake up for Christmas, it's six a.m. Okay. Yeah, and to them it's nine the night before. I don't think the difference is that. Well, is it? I don't know. I don't know what the difference is, but I know <laughs> basically the idea is there's a time difference. There is, and if I'm in Christmas time, but they're not, and then I call them and say Merry Christmas, they're gonna be like, dude, it's not Christmas yet. <laughs> Does it work like that? Yes. So people can start Christmas before other people start Christmas. Yes. Really? Yeah. I don't. I don't think that's right. <laughs> like morally? Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> yes, I feel. I feel upset with I feel myself. Like it's wrong. Well, I feel like. I don't know. It's why would we have it set up where not everyone can celebrate Christmas at the same time? Like why? Do I mean, we, have we don't it? have it set up. I don't really. Time zones. They're they're oh, just no. a fabrication of man. So what <laughs> that's true. So why do we have it set up where certain days don't fall I know they don't fall at the same time, but like Christmas should just be unanimously at the same time. Or New Year's. When it's New Year's, when the new year happens, it's not midnight for everybody, it's midnight for some people. Right? So right. some people are still in the year before? While other people are the year, the next year? <laughs> Is that how it works? <laughs> yeah, or think. is there like the first person to be in the new year? And Wait, then it, everyone watches the ball drop in New York, right? Yeah. But if you're on the West Coast, you just watch that. and. But it's not the new year or the new year already happened. Do you think there's an initial point where it's 12 <laughs> somewhere and then everyone after it? <laughs> no, that wouldn't make sense because if everyone after is already after. So the new year, like halfway around the planet, is not a new year yet. Right. How does that work? I don't know. Why? Can I, you time I forget, travel I forget what all the time zones. I think it's like a six-hour difference in California. Say you go to Australia then. That's a day difference. Yeah. But is it a day ahead or a day before? I don't know. Well, even then, if you knew someone in Australia and you're like, happy birthday, and they're like, crikey, it's not Christmas, it's Boxing Day. <laughs> what was that last thing? <laughs> boxing Day. What's Bo that? Boxing Day. Oh, that's, bo yeah, Boxing Day. Boxing. Boxing Day. <laughs> <laughs> that's my Australian accent. I like it. Um, what, uh, so, I don't know time zone <laughs> stuff, man. So it must not all happen at the same time? The New Year's throw me through a loop. Because cause you see it, like, say, in movies, and everyone celebrates the new year. Yeah. And, and they show the whole world, and everyone's like, Happy New Year. But is it, like, <laughs> four in the afternoon? <laughs> in... <laughs> That's true. So That's funny. How does that work? How, does, how do we transition into a new year? Once again, as generally stupid questions go, this is something I could look up easily on Google. But, but the whole point is not to. And I think part of life is figuring out things for yourself. Right. Well, here's one thing for sure. Yeah. I looked up a uh, time zone map. Use Google. Alaska is purple. And what does that mean? There's no key. It's just like. I actually don't see a key on this map. I just see that Alaska. Is purple? Is purple. That's see. I'm glad we learned that because if Alaska was green, I'd be real upset. Right. And that would be that would be a serious issue. Yeah. Um. Okay. Let's say mm -hmm. this map is accurate i can't it won't even let me look at it this is just it's the worst this yep. is the worst day of my life is alaska still purple on that map uh you know what alaska is not even on this map <laughs> <laughs> so that map is even more inaccurate i'm gonna go ahead and not use that map okay how about this one mm -hmm, mm -hmm. this just tells me which time zones are which that still doesn't help anybody you could just type in does everyone celebrate christmas at the same time because everyone wants to know. <laughs> well, the reason why I was thinking of this is because we just had the eclipse right. in the world. So does everyone in the world see the eclipse at the same time? Because people were going, well, I guess the same time, but they don't see it the same way. Because people are traveling to certain states right. to uh, see the eclipse, see a better version of this eclipse. Yeah, yeah. But if you're in a different time zone, does the eclipse happen at a different time? 
Nah, I mean, technically. But I guess it's but all it's the, at the same time. Yeah. yeah. I, okay, that makes sense. But if there's a holiday, if there's a day you're waiting for. Yeah, the New Year's day. thing is throwing you for a loop because that's a thing based on a clock time. Yeah, that yeah. is that is a time. So it's like mm. there's a point where someone is in the year 2018 and someone's in the year 2017. Because time doesn't reset at that no. point. Why does that happen? I don't know. Now, the real question is, if you're in a plane, yeah, could you, like, you could technically go back in time. <laughs> if it's 2018 in one place, and then you cross back to 2017. <laughs> now, how do we do that on a much bigger scale? That's the real That's question. That's the question. I bet if there's a leap year. That could that could be it. That could be that's like when the wormhole opens. Yeah. So you go back in time. Yeah. On a leap year, mm -hmm. and you should go forward in the future four years. In theory. Okay. That's a hundred percent solid. That theory. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's it, folks. That's the answer to the question today. Okay. You can time travel, not on Christmas, but on New Year's. During a leap year. <laughs> During a leap year, <laughs> but you'll only go ahead four years in time. Right. That seems a shame. It's a start. Yeah. And you then from gotta there. start somewhere. I wonder if you could ever go back. I guess you would have to go from 2017 to 2018 on a leap yeah, year. Yeah, on a leap year. So if you go back, you go forward. But if you go forward, you're going back. I mean, isn't it obvious? Yeah, I, it makes sense now. Seems obvious. All right, I'm saving us from this. Let's go into. <laughs> do you have television? Yeah. We okay. both do. Oh, yeah. Television. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Television. Um. All right. So I finished watching Iron Fist, Watcha! and you finished watching Iron Fist. Watcha! Nice job. <laughs> Thanks. Um. Spit on your face. Oh, gross. Uh, we're. Oh, I didn't feel it until you. Well, that was it. my sweaty finger. Oh, come on. <laughs> so, um, third week in a row talking about Iron Fist. Yeah. Good. So it doesn't have to be much. We can go spoilers if mm -hmm. there's anything specific you want to talk about. Yep. Um, the only thing I really want to say, I, I guess we could give a general overview mm -hmm. and our final thoughts on it. Mm -hmm. um, overall, I think the story was interesting and there were characters that I really enjoyed throughout. Mm -hmm. um, Ward Meacham was easily my favorite character. Absolutely. Um, he was my favorite part of the whole story. Mm -hmm. um, I think personally, he kind of fell off towards the end. Yeah, be well. I think mostly because he didn't have much screen time. Yeah, which kind of brings me to, I guess, like just speaking of the end, it was the last episode was like so anticlimactic. Mm -hmm. It just felt like. Oh, it's over now. Yeah, that's the end of that. Like it did not feel like a finale. No, there was no. We talked about it before, like that big shabam moment that makes no. you want to come back for next season. Yeah. I mean, there kind of was with the... I, I mean, that's what it was supposed to be, but I just didn't care. No. I wasn't invested mm -hmm. in that moment where it was like, you know, uh, it, it it definitely leaves on like a cliffhanger that's like, now what? Right. But I was just like, I guess. I, I mean, think mostly it was because Danny was becoming a much more, at least for me, a frustrating character near the end because he was having major trouble with his anger issues. Yeah. And he kept freaking out and, like, starting to see flashbacks and all that stuff. And I'm like, dude, just – I was really looking forward to the point where he found his inner peace and, like, became normal again, right. like how he was at the beginning of the series. Um, but he didn't really hit that. No. Nah. Um, and so I think that is because, uh, and at the end, it, it, at least to me, it didn't matter that much because I was like, you know, Danny, I didn't like Danny as much near the end. I don't, yeah. I don't know. I mean, the whole thing kind of just fell flat for me on the last episode. And there were a couple, again, there were a couple decisions that I'm like, why would you write that in like that? Mm -hmm. Where, okay. The final like showdown, um, there were a couple things I had problems with. One of which is Danny's been shot, mm -hmm. and so he's hiding um, from uh, what is his name? Do Daddy you Warbucks. His name? Yeah, <laughs> what's his name though? I'll look it up. I, it's probably the same thing I thought of. <laughs> Daddy Warbucks. Well, because he's rich and older. <laughs> <laughs> this is really just uh, Annie. 
uh, you know, live action Annie remake. Right. That's what Even though is. all Annie's live action. <laughs> 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 so, um, Harold Meacham. Harold. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So he's it's a rooftop showdown with Harold. Harold mm-hmm. shoots him, and he's like hiding from Harold. And at one point, he pops out, punches him, and runs in the and other runs. direction and hides again. <laughs> I know exactly. I was like, he he was on the ground. He got the gun away. And got and Harold on, on the ground. On the ground. And your iron fist. He could have ended it right there. But he runs in the other direction. Like, it just didn't make any sense. That made I, me so mad. I was like, what are you, an idiot? It what doesn't, are you doing? Yeah, like, so I don't know why that scene is there. I don't know why you would. It would have been much better if they just, if he didn't punch him. If, like, maybe he shot yeah, at him. He's still hidden. Yeah. yeah. He's still hiding or he's, mm-hmm. but he would never like knock him over and then run in the other direction and let him pick up the gun and get himself back together like why would you do that why and that to me was just like the bullet scene which i know you justified somehow but (laughs) i still don't understand how a bullet shot through a truck and all its contents to shoot like with enough power to break someone's windshield like it's a really high caliber it's so stupid (laughs) so i don't know that happened and Mm -hmm. the final i guess that was like the final showdown Mm -hmm. and it wasn't anything no, amazing. that was it was um, much more of like an emotional showdown than it yeah. was like a, a fight, you know. Right, which was I mean that aspect was cool, I mm-hmm. guess, but I mean, yeah, uh, he felt like a they like shoehorned him in. Like I I felt like he didn't necessarily need to become the villain at the end. Harold? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean he kind of always was. Yeah, I mean but when they killed him, I would have been totally fine with him being gone, you know. Even though they oh. they brought him back and everything, but I just kind of feel like the story concluded like two episodes before. Uh, yeah, that's totally what it felt like. Everything that happened with the hand. Yeah, yeah, um, that's where I think it should have like enclosed. Yeah, should have finished off that chapter. Me too, but they went back and it just got weird. And then, um, I don't know. I, it was just very like it ended, and I turned to Rachel and I was like, "That was kind of drab." Yeah, like, I don't. And she was like, yeah, it just kind of is over now. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's been the whole series, though. I think it's been ups and downs throughout the entire thing, you know? Yeah. Um, unfortunately, where <laughs> the roller coaster <laughs> ended was uh, at a low point. Um, but I, I am looking forward to a next season. Uh, I think Marvel has continuously made these shows great. And even though it was kind of lackluster, I did, I did overall enjoy it. I did, too. Like, overall, I definitely enjoyed it. I think it was my least favorite. Um but I did. There were some action scenes that I really enjoyed. I re- there were certain characters I really liked. Mm-hmm. Harold Meacham, Colleen Wing. Um, it was interesting what they did with the hand. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, the hand is such a prominent presence in, yeah. in uh, both this and the Defenders. You mm-hmm. know, that's how everything comes together is very interesting. But yeah. Um, so overall, it was it was enjoyable. But I would say, what does it have for a rating on IMDb? Seven out of ten. Yeah, that sounds about right. Better than I thought, honestly. Yeah. Just from everything I've been hearing. I know. People in general uh, seem to have received it poorly, mm-hmm. but it's enjoyable. I would still invi- advise everyone to watch it. Yep. Um, this always happens during the podcast. There we go. <laughs> what, your phone sucks? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's totally watchable. I think um, it does. It's it's kind of cool because it has a bunch of villains. Like It mm-hmm. jumps around all over the place with the villains, so it makes it interesting that way. Yeah. Um. And like I said, I think it's totally a watch. And you definitely <clears throat> can't watch Defenders with wa- without watching all these shows. Yeah. Whether or not you want to, I mean, the story hinges a lot on everything you've learned mm-hmm. from all the other shows. Yeah. I mean, I I wouldn't I wouldn't advise anyone to skip any of them. Mm-hmm. Um. I talked to a friend recently. He's like, Yeah, I've watched. I finished Daredevil, obviously, and mm-hmm. I've watched two episodes of Jessica Jones and two episodes of um, Luke Cage. How could you only watch two episodes of Jessica I Jones? I don't know. <laughs> I know. I was like, dude, finish him, yeah, please. Yeah. Like, what's mm-hmm. happening? So, And with Iron Fist, I would say the same thing. Like, definitely watch it. Yep. Um, there are a lot of really, really good episodes. Um, yeah. And a lot of really good scenes, good character interactions, and stuff that you should definitely know mm-hmm. within the universe and all that. Yeah, um, totally. Um, I don't mind... I don't mind Finn Jones as Danny Rand, Iron Fist. No, I, I think he's okay. I just don't love the writing and some of the scenes. No. I don't understand like why certain things happen that are like that. Why would he do that? Mm-hmm. I can't. Somebody explain to me why he would do that. Right, exactly. And uh, th- he, 
I, I once again, I don't think it's his fault. I think just how they it could be the director's fault how they tell him to react yeah. in these situations and stuff and even how it's written with certain scenes but i'm thinking more along the lines of like him just getting angry all the time and being stupid by running into places like yeah i'm gonna go in because i'm angry and i gotta destroy the hand and it's that like, is frustrating but that i can see being part of his like development yeah i mean i haven't read the comics so i don't know if his yeah. character's like that uh, like i anticipated him being like like you're saying a little bit more centered and mm -hmm. like a, a stronger warrior yeah um because he is kind of a loose cannon near the end and it's it seems as if he's you know this is his they're showing us he's less mature than you think mm -hmm. kind of in his like journey to becoming a warrior yeah. and stuff like that and and having like peace within himself mm -hmm. to like carry himself well i don't think he's all there yet and yep. he's still like becoming iron fist kind mm -hmm. of um, but you know, it was, I don't know. There were just other things like other fight decisions. And, you know, we talked before about him saying things that obviously sound crazy to these people mm -hmm. that have no idea that what you're saying is true. Yep. So why would you not be smart enough to realize that? At least farther into the series. Right. Yeah. Because it happens throughout. It mm -hmm. never like, there's never like yeah, a waking up from that. Uh, it seems like. Yeah. So I don't know. It was stuff like that's annoying because mm -hmm. it's like how many people work on this one show. Right. And nobody was like, hey, that's dumb. Yeah. Exactly. Let's not have him knock over the villain and then run and hide in a corner. <laughs> um, They're like, no, it's good for story purposes. I don't, yeah. See. It's super weird. Yeah. Um, but watch it though. Yep, totally watch <laughs> it. <laughs> um, uh, what did you think of the ending? It showed up where all the characters were at the end. Mm -hmm. Joy, that guy that is his friend. What do you think about that little? Oh, Davos. Thing? Yes. Um, do you think that was or weird? Or Davos. Davos. Da I believe. B or V. Uh, da da da. Davos with Davos. A v. I was right the first time. You were. Um. What was the question? You think it was just weird that he... It was weird, that, yeah. That he would choose to do whatever he's doing, you yeah. know? There are a lot of... Um, that was one thing about this show is almost every character is way more complex than you think initially. Oh, yeah. Like Davos, mm -hmm. uh, Joy... Joy's pretty straightforward. Yeah, um, e except for that ending point. Yeah, that's, that's did, the part that. that could be a little bit twisty turny yeah. um but for the most part she's a pretty straightforward character yeah but everyone has this like second layer yeah of harold is mm -hmm. super weird and complex even colleen you know she um, yep completely twisted Wait, did i say colleen i don't think so what did i say first davos oh yeah i was gonna <laughs> say colleen sorry i said it real loud in my head no it's okay <laughs> you're yelling colleen! yeah you're gonna say <laughs> but yeah i think that's definitely a strong suit of this show is all these people with their yeah how the characters are written right and there's a lot of like like seeing how they all uh oh also uh well to finish that seeing how they all relate mm -hmm. with people who are close to them um you know same thing with ward ward mm -hmm. and joy and harold and ward's relationship is super weird yeah and uh even the dude from the hand um bakudo yeah he was also like such an interesting character yeah. mm -hmm. um so there's a lot, there's a lot, there's definitely enough in there that make it all worth watching and mm -hmm. experiencing. But, um, I think that was the majority of what was cool about it. Yep. It was actually less about Iron Fist himself. Mm -hmm. That was, that I found intriguing. Yeah. It's funny that the show's called Iron Fist, but we like the characters a lot more than like yeah. maybe Iron Fist himself. You maybe. Know? Yeah. So, uh, anyways, yep. Yeah, totally worth a lot watch. We'll, we'll stop talking about it cause we finished it finally. <laughs> But, uh, and you guys might have noticed I was alluring, allu alluring, I think. Alluding? Alluding. Yeah. Alluring. What's that? You're like drawing someone in. <laughs> Maybe. So I was alluding towards the, the Defenders. That came out yeah. last week. Um, you didn't watch any of it yet? None. So maybe I won't talk much. Don't. I, I do want to say pretty good. That's what you want to say. <laughs> That's what you want to spend this time saying. I yeah, I want to say that um, it certainly has its issues, but not nearly as bad as like Iron Fist issues and stuff. Like mm. there's just little things here and there. But anyways, Defenders totally worth a watch. I would say definitely watch all the shows before because it uh, uh, it 
does a great job of continuing all the stories. Yeah. Um, and uh, cutting off a lot of loose ends that were in the other stories. And it, it's kind of like it is the Avengers of the TV yeah, series. Yeah. Like it just uh, it totally the Marvel's a pro at all these team up collabs yeah so. uh but yeah i i watched it but i'll wait for you to watch it so we can have a full sweet full-blown conversation yeah but, uh totally watch it guys it's great cool mm-hmm. yeah um that's all i had in tv yeah me too you want to go to the movies sure okay ooh, ooh, let's go to the movies so i'll start off first with disney mm-hmm. leaving netflix already disney is i don't know if they're backing out of the deal or struck a new deal but basically what they're doing is starting their own streaming service uh so uh uh, that could lead to a lot of controversy between marvel right um they said they're still going to keep the marvel shows on there okay the marvel movies they're not sure um but they are definitely pulling all the disney movies off putting it on that streaming service so uh everything that was so exciting about that deal you know, they they got rid of it. They they pulled out already. Man, um, and that's frustrating because we got the movies real fast after they yeah, came out did. on DVD or Blu-ray or whatever, um, and it was a really good selection. So it's a little upsetting because obviously we're gonna have to pay whatever ten bucks a month for a Disney service. I wonder what's gonna be on it. I mean, they do have an incredible catalog. Oh yeah, it's huge. Um, uh, yeah, but like content-wise, I mean, Disney does own Marvel. They own Lucas. Lucasfilm, uh, they own uh, obviously Disney and stuff. Um, so there's a lot there, but it's not like not like Netflix or Hulu or whatever where they can have right. a massive variety and add any movie from anywhere. You know, mm-hmm. so it's only gonna be if you really like Disney movies, pay ten bucks a month to watch your favorites, I guess. Yeah. So a little stupid, a little depressing, but on the plus side, they said they are going to keep all the Marvel shows there. So the Netflix, I yeah, mean, they're Netflix originals, right? So, exactly. Yeah. So um, they didn't talk about future shows, like new ones they're working on. Mm. But uh, I feel like that would be weird. I mean, yeah, they they would split their audience so much. I mean, it's a way, obviously, to make more money. But if the Disney one is like mostly Disney animated stuff, mm-hmm. and and then to bring like how dark the Netflix Marvel oh, yeah, shows are no like way they could do that wouldn't make any sense for them to just no. I don't know depends what they're doing with the streaming service I guess but yeah. I don't feel like that would fit the market yeah um, so that was a little upsetting to hear I think what was it the end of October I think they're pulling all of it off so yeah yeah so it gives you a kind of short time limit to watch whatever you need to watch Jungle Book has been in my queue forever I, I oh need to yeah watch mine that. too um, but other than that I mean it just thinks there's no like Civil War no no nothing that yeah. I can just pop on Rogue now. One uh yeah oh, rogue one that was i'm not happy <laughs> um so that was a little upsetting but, yeah i mean what can you do you know um did you watch any movies at all did you watch anything? i don't think i watched anything Nothing. this week no nah, you've been a busy guy it's been so. a busy week mm-hmm. yeah finished up iron fist that was the big one yeah and then rachel's been watching luke cage because she hasn't watched it yet are you watching it with her like again uh, a couple episodes mm-hmm. i've watched her there but um mostly she's been doing that while i've been studying oh yeah Cause you're a smarty pants. Ugh, not yet. No, you're there though. You're working towards yeah, it. Yeah, just about. Yeah. I got a new job, and it requires studying. That's all. That's it. That's it. So, um, so, so yeah. So basically, I'm gonna be running the podcast for the next few weeks. No, I passed my exam that I was studying for, so now I have more studying to do. But it's <laughs> 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 it's not quite as taxing. Yeah, time consuming. It's less. It's less stuff that mm-hmm. i have to study so um and my schedule will uh level out within the next couple of weeks yeah. right now it's just sporadic. that transition phase that's all it is that's all it is that's all it is man no worries all right so i'll jump into uh i think i have notes for two movies but i think i'm only going to talk about one okay what do you got uh did you ever see sing that was the, the animated one. Yeah, the Illumi- I didn't know. Oh, oh, oh. You, it, it was. I watched it. it was good. Um, yeah, it was really good. Really? Was, yeah. So, um, if you don't know, Sing is a story about a uh, singing competition in this kind of like, it's like a Hollywood type town, but not as big as Hollywood. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, the idea is the show will bring a lot of attention to the town and be really great for the town. Sure. Um, so the um guy who owns this uh theater is a koala. 
and uh, of course, of course uh, played by Matthew McConaughey. Nice, which is great. You ve- hear very little hints of him, but really? it doesn't sound like him too much. Um, but basically, the theater is failing, so he wants to get the show so everyone will come up. Yeah. Uh, but he doesn't have a lot of money, so initially he wants to have a prize of I think it's a thousand dollars. Uh, but crazy antics happen where it ends up being a hundred thousand dollars. Um, so it gets everybody in the city to go do the singing competition at the theater. Okay. Um, so that's the premise. So it, uh, and then you start meeting, it actually starts out real cool because it shows you the main singers of the, uh, of the movie and like where they are in life at that time Okay. and what they're doing and like what their motivations can be for this competition. Yeah. Um, so it sets up all the characters. Then you learn about the koala and his situation. Uh, and then you just get into the story, what the, the meat of it. Yeah. Um, I think what was so interesting is how realistic they made the story. Like, even though it's with singing animals, you know, <laughs> like it, it feels a lot like a slice of life movie, oh. you know? Um, but let me look up the voice actors. Cause there was a few that I was surprised with, but, um, Obviously, the main draw of this movie is the musical performances because yeah. um, the songs vary from Frank Sinatra's like 50 style music to modern remakes of like Call Me Maybe or Firework, you know. So, oh, okay. so they are varied in their song approach. Yeah. Um, so that was very cool. And that is cool. And it's totally a musical in all sense and purpose because yeah. there are moments where they're singing all over the place. But um, yeah, I was very impressed with it. Um, and, and all the voice actors did the singing? I think so. Yeah. Um, so Seth MacFarlane did the voice of Mike, which oh, was a little nice. mouse, uh, and he did 50s music. You That's know, what amazing. So it was perfect. Seth MacFarlane, if you don't know, does a lot of voices on Family Guy. and Creator uh, of Family Guy. Yeah. Uh, the voice of Ted as well. Yeah. Um, so he's got a very deep, like, great voice. His voice is so good. Yes. Uh, Reese Witherspoon, Scarlett Johansson, uh, John C. Riley. He doesn't sing at all, but... <laughs> um, and Taron... Uh, Egerton, he was uh, the guy in Kingsman, the young kid. Okay. Um, but uh, he did really good. Uh, who else? And Tori Kelly, which she's singing in her picture. So. Oh, okay. She's clearly, but um, surprisingly good performances by everybody. You yeah. Know? Um, what else? Animation was solid. The, this is from Illumination that does uh the Minions movie. Yeah. Despicable Me, all that stuff. So, uh, very solid. Um. I don't know. I was just, I was just really satisfied. That's funny. With it. I'll have to, I'll have to watch it at some point. The yeah, kids even, really like it. They yeah, saw it. yeah. I was gonna say, even without kids, it was like, just as an adult, you can appreciate it because there are situations where you're like, oh, that's so relatable. You know? Yeah. Like yeah. I, I've seen maybe not me personally, but I've seen people in these situations. So it's like this money would be huge, and and you're, it's almost like American Idol where you're rooting for these people. Like, yeah. What? Who do you want to win the most? But everyone has high stakes. So. It's so funny how real animated movies have gotten. That's, and it's crazy. Like, I'll never forget watching Zootopia and yeah, being like, Yo, Zootopia was incredible is, for that, realness. for the realisticness. And we talked about it, how, like, there's the adult portion and the kids portion where the kids enjoy all the zany animals. Yeah. But the adults get the realistic story. Group right, on right. It, so, uh, and they totally nailed it with this movie. I was That's awesome. I was thoroughly impressed. All right. Songs are catchy. Um and that's all I can say for now. I hope they make a sequel. Because I was just going to say they probably will. Definitely not sequel. Like uh, there wasn't a setup for a sequel. Yeah. You know? um, but they totally should. Cause yeah. I wonder if it. it did well. Because most animated movies, if they do well at all, have any kind of like merchandising. Yeah. Potential. Mm-hmm. They'll make more than one. Yeah, they yeah. will. I hope so. so. That's cool. I'm mm-hmm. glad, glad it was good. So, uh, yeah, and I watched um, – I won't even talk about the other movie. I'll say that, save that for later. Fine. Fine. Uh, do you want to go on video games? I know you do. I do. All right. Video games. All right, I'm ready. <sighs> I got it back. You got it back. All right. We're in games now. So before I talk about the big, most important game to ever grace the world – yeah. Talk about little news tidbits that came out recently. All right, here we go. First news off, news timbits. New, news timbits. Um, Fear Effect is getting an HD remaster. Fear Effect. Fear Effect. Oh. <laughs> How weird is that? That's super weird. I out of all the games to get a remaster, I mean, I know Fear Effect was uh, big and people played it and stuff, but um, it's getting an HD remaster. Um, this is going to be the whole podcast now. That's Carry it. on. Carry. Come on. <laughs> I'm going to break your watch. This is just the worst. Look, he stopped it. I'm going to throw that thing out the window. Just shoot. I was trying to kill it. 
Uh, so yeah, Fear Effect is getting an HD remaster. It's coming out on uh, PlayStation, Xbox, and Nintendo Switch, as as well as Steam. Um, but I was pretty excited. about Did you that. ever play that game? I, I played it. Uh, I have it over there, and I started it. Um, but I remember watching you or my dad or whoever play it a bunch. Tim. Yes. Did you ever play that game for a little bit? It's, it's four cool. discs. I know it's four discs. That's insane. It's insane. That's a lot of. It's not that long though. It's not that long. It's so Why? funny because back in the day on PS One, you would be like, "Oh my gosh, four discs! I'm never going to beat it!" <laughs> and then you, you play it. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was like, "That's how I talked." Around. We were living in Arkansas at the time. Yeah, it makes sense. And uh, it was like, <laughs> <laughs> like you would play it and it would feel so long because you mm -hmm. have to go through so many discs. But I played it. I don't know, a few years back maybe, mm -hmm. and played it again or for the yeah first time? again. Okay. Like I went back and because there are a bunch of games. I don't know if I ever beat it when I was a kid, mm -hmm. like when I was younger. But then you were like, you get older and you remember, like, oh, I remember playing that game. Yeah. Then you go through and play it as an adult, and you're like, oh, it's so good. Yeah, exactly. You know? or, or it's awful. It's yeah. awful. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I played it and it held up. And uh, like I think the first disc is like a couple hours, mm -hmm. and then it's like switch disc. But nowadays you play anything starting on like Xbox, and it's like. You know, I don't know. 12 oh my god! Hours, yeah, it would be like hours. it would be like friggin' forty discs. Yeah, at this exactly. point. Exactly. Um, which one? Mass Effect Two. That was two discs, and uh, you probably got about forty hours per disc. Yeah. Um. And uh, yeah, comparatively to PlayStation, like I think they could only have one hundred and twenty-eight megabytes on a CD. Okay. At the time, I think I don't know. I don't remember. I feel like Fear Effect was like. Eight hours maximum total for all four days. I think so. It could be. I mean, I'm graphically, that game is pretty intense. Like, it is. Like I know it has a lot of uh, like still shots, like Resident Evil and stuff. Yeah. But just the character models and the art style was probably like heavy. Like it was a lot of data. It was cel shaded, wasn't it? Uh, yeah. Yep. Um, definitely an early example of it. So, um, but yeah, I remember that game because I think it had a. How big is it? Did you just? I thought six you just and a half hours. Wow, that's even shorter than I thought. All right, it says main story and extras eight hours, completionist mm -hmm. ten hours. So it looks like ten hour maximum. So I wonder what the difference between main story and collectibles. Yeah, is me too. Completionist. completionist. Are you on um how long to beat dot com or whatever? Yeah. Yeah, I mean a lot of the times you can kind of figure out the difference, but that game, I mean, I I don't have a great knowledge on it. Um. I don't know what the difference would be. I don't remember there being like a ton of extras, but yeah, but yeah, I, anywhere. But it's, it's it probably average seven, eight hours. Yeah, on four discs. On four discs. That's insane. Yeah, um, that's cool though. I mean, I'm excited. I'm curious. It's how, a great game. Yeah, I, I remember it being really neat. And when I played it, it had a cool uh, gameplay system where like, um, you uh, aiming was a little more difficult than traditional third person shooters yes. because it was more. Uh, like you had to like lock on to the guys, but then at that point you had to figure out where to aim specifically because yep. you couldn't just lock on and start shooting. Even if you aimed at the head, you had to make sure you didn't aim too high and over the head or too <laughs> low and you'd hit his leg or whatever. Right. Um, so it was cool. It had a different uh, system, but uh, the other benefit to this is if this sells well, they'll make a HD remake of the second game nice, and possibly a third game or Ooh. a fourth game. I don't think they came out with a third one. But I remember they were talking about it years ago, how they're like, mm. you know, we want these games to come out again. And if they yeah. do well, we make a lot of money. We can make the next one in the series. Right. That um, would be sweet. So, uh, yeah. I think there's only two. I think there's only two Retro as well. Helix. But I thought some weird game came out. It was like Fear Effect Outbreak or something weird like that. And it was on iPhone or something. Maybe, maybe there was a PSP that might be it actually it was like just a weird side story or whatever i don't know if it ever came out maybe it was kickstarted um Perfect. but anyways that that was exciting here because i i've always thought it was an in interesting game and it makes me interested to play the old one so i can compare it to the new one but yeah you should definitely play it i would suggest mm -hmm. anyone go play that game it's super cool it's super fun and i think that um I think you could also jump and shoot, like you could dive and shoot. That sounds a little familiar. Which was like a big thing. It wasn't like Max Payne status yeah. yet, but it was but, like I mean, pre still that. cool. Yeah, like hide behind cover and stuff. Yeah. It probably had a lot of... I mean, people talk about it all the time, so it, I, I bet it has a good impression for a mm -hmm. reason. So Yeah, it was a good game for sure. Mm -hmm. um, and the other gaming news I had, there's a new game coming out called Biomutant. Okay. Right up your alley. That's the only reason I bring it up is because I think you'd be massively interested in it. Okay. Um. So it's an open world brawling RPG where okay. you play as this 
small fox-like creature. You almost look like a raccoon. Um, and there's no gameplay for it or anything. Um, but the premise is you basically survive. What? Did you look it up? Yeah. The the main character, and it totally looks like Rocket Raccoon to a degree, but he's got like an And ox. Fox. And Fox, yeah. And he has like a, I don't know if it's an eye patch or a cybernetic eye, but uh, in the game you can upgrade the animal by like you can get better claws, better uh, like rocket boots. Like there are upgrades to the creature <laughs> so you can make it more mechanical or more nature like you know Whoa. um but it looks really cool the trailer was super neat he i think he fights a gorilla or something huge that um looks super cool but it, it looks like it has a variety of both uh like weapons like guns and stuff and yeah. swords he uses swords and his claws and like various things to fight this i think i don't remember what it was gorilla or bear or something Radical. um but this is from the developers of Just Cause, um, and they make really fun gameplay games. Yeah. Like, their stories are never good. Graphics are – they're all right, but gameplay is their, like, forte. They're really good at it. Cool. So if this game is from those guys, which it is, it'll Console be – Console game? Uh, yeah, it'll be on Xbox One, PS4, all that stuff. So, no. uh, But it looks really cool. I'm excited. So keep your eyes open for that. Um, I guess I'll jump into uh, the big game that came out this week. Shaq Fu. Shaq Fu, the Revenge of Fidget Spinners. In HD. <laughs> no, the real game is... <laughs> I'm not even going to tell you. <laughs> I, I'm going to kill this thing. You're too slow. Unlike... Sonic Mania! <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay, what? <laughs> Sonic Mania finally came out. I have been talking about this game forever. Yes. I'm... Oh. Oh. So, um, Tim Tim recently became a fan of Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah, it, it just started, like, probably a week ago after new, I heard... It's a new thing for him. Yeah, I heard some great Sonic music. And that's what made me a fan. Oh I just say, if you ever want to kill the podcast, this is the way to do it. He can, and he won't stop. So this whole review is going to be useless. You know what's cool is in the last episode near the end, it kind of like bleeds into our theme song because I was playing it on my phone near the camera and you can hear. So Sonic Mania. I'm so upset with you. That was freaky. <laughs> You're like five years old. <laughs> you just you lose interest in everything in five seconds. You're like, do 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 do. Start playing with the fidget spinner. Do 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 do. And then he gets back to it. I also apologize. Last week the audio was a little scratchily. How's that for a word? Yeah, I'm with you. It's a little scratch. Why? Because you won't stop smacking the table? I think so. I don't know. It just kept going like... Yeah, because you're randomly. Too, you're making everyone's ears bleed. I'm sorry. All right. So, Tim, you want to marry Mania. Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> yeah, that's it. He he caught me there. Why don't you marry him? Mwah, mwah. And then what happened? A game came out or something? You're on YouTube, so you're going to look up Marvel Zone. No, I just, not. I can't even continue until you're done. The best part is I was just like, crap, I can't remember it. And then you said it. <laughs> I was like, I can't remember what the zone's called. I just. Go ahead. I won't play it unless it starts on its own after I hit play. Yeah. After you hit play, huh? <laughs> We're going to do a whole podcast with that playing on repeat. Um, when you have cool stuff to talk about, and just I'm just gonna play it all over. This is the worst podcast ever. I'm sorry, guys. You have to listen to this every week. Brett doesn't even know how to be new. He can't even talk. He has to use music to let him talk. It's real upsetting. And for you audio listeners, I don't even know what to tell you. Brett's dancing right now, like an idiot. Um, and unfortunately, you guys are just gonna have to use your imagination because Brett doesn't care about you guys. And I'm sorry. This is just... He just like... It's not even for a video. I'm not even going to post this video at this point. 
just garbage. You guys are gonna delete it. You're gonna you're gonna avoid watching it. Sonic Mania came out. I lost all love for it. A game for Sega Genesis. Sega Genesis and Dreamcast. Sega Genesis. And <laughs> Heemcast. Dreamcats. Dreamcats. Creamcats. No cats. Felines. So what is Sonic Mania? Sonic Mania. So this is the love child of Sega people okay. <laughs> and fans of Sonic. Right. So Sega went to Sega. Yeah, pretty much. Hold on, I gotta pull up these guys specifically. Uh, da da da. So Here, I'll uh, help. okay, I found them already. Oh. Um. Oh, you came in as I was finishing writing the notes. So I only have half of the development team. Quick, write some more while this plays. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so bad at you. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, Keep it going. Okay. Um, We're it, live. So Sega went to um, some Sonic fan game creators, uh, Head Cannon and Pagoda West Games. Oh. Uh, so they went to them, and they're like, you guys are amazing at making Sonic games. We want you to actually develop a real Sonic game. What? So they took fans of Sonic to Yo. make a fan-made Sonic game. Dream job. Also led by a guy named, I lost the notes again, uh, Christian Whitehead. Okay. Which he's been working with Sega for a little while to uh, bring all the older Sonics to iOS and uh, HD remakes and enhanced okay. versions. So he's already dabbled. But he initially made Sonic fan games, too, before Sega found him. Mm -hmm. So now they made this dream team of people yeah. to design their own Sonic game. Uh, you know, they have all the assets that Sega has. Yeah. And they're like, just go nuts, you know. Here, Here's your game. Um, so we got Sonic Mania. Yeah. And it shows, man. It shows really? so well. This this is everything people have been waiting for for Sonic to come back to and, and so much more. Yeah. Like they, they knocked it out of the park. Um, so initially when I played this game, my uh, – um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like frames per second, like my quality of the game was horrible. I couldn't play a single level without it like glitching out and freaking out and being bad. So I was what? I it was so frustrating because it kept like stuttering real bad or uh like slowing down and I couldn't I couldn't do bonus stages, I couldn't do anything. And I what was like systems you get on? Xbox One. Okay. Now, that being said, I got about half <coughs> no, not even halfway. It's long too. I still haven't beaten it. Um but I got like uh, four four stages in, you know, so okay. it's got act one and two fight a boss each stage and then you continue um but it was just like unplayable i was like and i kept reading reviews this is amazing no one's having performance issues and i'm like what what's going on and i was so upset because i i couldn't play it it was just too frustrating it kept messing up what happened so uh i eventually figured out that having my connect plugged in on the xbox made the game run like crap it just for some reason it and i i heard this before a long time ago with a different game i don't even remember what game uh prey actually uh, Prey had a major issue where the game became basically unplayable when the Kinect's plugged in. That's weird. Um, so I knew my Kinect was plugged in, so I'm like, maybe this will fix it. So I unplugged it, fixed it completely and utterly. The game was flawless, 60 frames. I was like, oh, this is the game I needed to play. So my <laughs> initial reaction to the game was like, this isn't any good because it wasn't good. Right, I, right. I couldn't play it to its full potential. Um, but then I fixed the issue. And hot damn, was it good? Really? Yeah, there. Uh, it. You know, I was probably playing at like twenty-four to thirty frames per second, even less than that. Yeah. But um, Sonic's so fast and all that stuff that you need to play it at well, max, yeah. max fame quality. So, um, max frame, not flame. <laughs> Wait, fame? I don't even know what I'm I saying. Know, sounded like you like <laughs> max flame quality. Flame quality. Uh, <laughs> anyways, that being said, uh, this game is like jesus dude it is so good really i mean uh, from the stages it's the story itself is really cool because basically the premise is uh dr eggman or dr robotnik depending on who you want to say he is um he finds this like time manipulation stone a little bit like chaos emeralds but it's its own thing okay um so he collects it and uh throughout the game you are time traveling through different points in sonic's career mm -hmm. so you start out with a green hill zone then the next stage is chemical plant uh and then i believe you go to a new stage um but th you start time traveling so they give you that's their excuse or their idea for you to replay old stages 
but with new twists and all this stuff that's added to it. Yeah. Um. So it was really exciting because I got to play Chemical Plant Zone again, the first level. Yeah. Uh, with the music, and then the second act is a completely revamped Chemical Plant Zone with new music, um, and just new puzzles, new areas and stuff. So oh, cool. So it's really cool because it's like it's the best of both worlds. I get yeah. to play older Sonic and a newer idea of what Sonic is. Um, visually, it's amazing. There, uh, there's so many colors I didn't even know existed until I started playing this game. <laughs> I was like, this game is pure beauty. Oh man, brings tears to my eyes because it's so beautiful. So, how many hours do you have on it so far? Uh, I probably have maybe four to five. Yeah. Um, and I'm probably a little more than halfway through. Okay. Like I said, there's a lot of stages. Um, yeah. Just looking through, I think there's like 10, 11, maybe a little more. So does it play just like one of the earlier Sonic games? Oh yeah, or? it plays much better. It, it plays like fan-made games play. Okay. Uh, which those have always just been superior because uh, the fans know how Sonic should move, you know, after yeah, playing yeah. it, people are like, oh, this is, this is how he should move. So, so he's got cool little animations and like, it's so detailed what they did with Sonic. Um, the other cool thing is you can play this uh, as three different characters. So oh. Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles. Oh, sweet. Um, so you can hypothetically play the game three times, three completely different ways. Which I'm sure you will. Yes. Oh yeah. I'm, I'm trying to find an excuse to play this game for 14 hours. And that's <laughs> tough. Um, uh, but, uh, yeah, it's real cool. And you can play, uh, Sonic and Tails, so you can play Sonic 2 style. Oh, sweet. Um, so Tails can kind of help you in situations or give an extra hit to the boss. You know, whatever he usually yeah. did, uh, which leads me to bosses. Yeah. Hands down, the best bosses in any really? Sonic game What ever. about them? Um, they, it's a beautiful blend of, like, reinventing older bosses, okay. taking mechanics or... Um, D- even different gameplay. So, like one uh, one of my favorite bosses. Uh, did you ever play Doctor Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine? I didn't. It was on Sega Genesis, and it's a Tetris style game. Okay, yeah, um, I remember it. I I have fond memories of this game because I had one achievement left in a Genesis collection. You had to beat Doctor Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine. That was a freaking challenge. That yeah. game was hard. Um, so uh, one of the bosses in the game, you get launched into a level of mean bean machine and you have to beat Robotnik what? in it too and it's like okay I guess I'll play this I was laughing the whole time because it's like if you're a fan of Sonic this is hilarious yeah. if not you're like what the heck's going on that's but, so funny um, but yeah from there I mean there's <laughs> so many you fight Metal Sonic you like uh, you, oh, cool. you do a new fight with him um, Eggman shows up periodically but there's also this new group of robots that uh, um, Eggman controls and they show up variously, uh, variously show up Show up a lot through the levels, <laughs> um, but they show up and uh, uh, it's just cool. There's such a beautiful variety in it, yeah. and each boss is so drastically different than the last. So it's uh, it's a beautiful. It's really it's really great. Oh, that's so sweet. Um, you must be so stoked. I, I seriously, I I can't wait. Once we're done with this, I'm going right back to it. Yeah. I want I want to beat it. Tonight. Is that what you were playing when I got here? No, that was a uh, Runbow. I actually started playing. Oh, that. I haven't tried that yet. That's really fun. Is it? Yeah, it was I'll it was a surprise. On. Um, but yeah, Sonic Mania is just. Everything I wanted. Sweet. Good music. Beautiful. Uh, oh, yeah. Is the music good? Yeah. It's it's a, a blend of both older um, tracks. Like, they just will replay Green Hill Zone. Like, when you're playing the first. Oh. It just feels like Sonic 1 when you're playing it. Yeah. Uh, and then you do Act 2, and it's like a new remix of it. So, it's oh, still cool. Green Hill Zone, but... You know, new remix, yeah, basically. Yeah. But it's cool because when you're hitting the old stages, you get the original, you get the remix, and then when you have new stage, it's completely new music. Oh, cool. Um, and it's great. It's totally a awesome addition. Some of the best I've heard so far. It's so funny how they can, like, recreate that feeling. Yeah, like, that time. Mm-hmm. That's so cool. And that's what it is. It totally just feels like the the next... It feels more like Sonic 4 than Sonic 4 was, you know? Right, right. Um, so they just... And, it, and like I said, it was smart of Sega to grab these guys because... Yeah. They love the games. They know how to what to do with them. So um, I'm excited. And the achievements are actually really cool, too, because yeah. they make you explore the levels more. Oh, cool. Because um, uh, one of them's like uh, it's called Studioopolis Zone, and it's basically like a Hollywood slash oh, casino, cool. casino night zone. Uh, and you have to take pictures, and there's like a, a little standee, and you stand behind it for a second, and Sonic will take pictures, and you'll get <laughs> the achievement. So there's uh, cool just various Easter eggs throughout the whole That's game. That's cool. That's <laughs> really cool. Yeah. it's Like I said, I'm just I'm so glad they picked the fans. Awesome. I want to play it. a Sonic game now. Yeah. It, it inspired me. I want to go and play all the older games again, even Marvel Hill Zone. I mean, Marvel Blast Ultra. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, how depressed would you be if it was just terrible? 
I, I was really scared it was when I was playing it with the Kinect. Yeah, on. that must have been a scary time for it you. It was so upsetting because I couldn't I couldn't find a solution. Yeah. Um and I like I said, I couldn't find anything online. There was just no I would have been so angry. No answer. So like it stinks because the first few levels of the game were great. Um, but because it played so crappy, I had such a hard time getting through it. Yeah. Because it's like even the buttons were delayed. You know, you press jump and Sonic wouldn't do it for a minute. So like the jump would happen oh, after. Oh, or dude, that would drive me insane. It was, and I was like, how is this game this broken? Like, did I not get an update? And it seriously, and for like four days, I couldn't figure it out. Um, but I did eventually, and now the game's flawless. So I'm just going to have to go through it again. Now you're going to play it forever and ever? Yes. Some of the uh, side challenges are driving me insane, though. Are those the ones you were talking about in the last episode? Uh, the one with you the... Play any of those yet? Yes. Yeah, it's cool. Um, That's the guy who Christian Whitehead, that's the guy who made uh, Sonic Mania. Interesting. Uh, yeah, so he worked on the iOS ports and stuff, but <laughs> Brett's playing Sonic. What are you playing, the first one? Yeah. Are you going to get to the stupid... I don't even want to say it anymore. It's a curse. I mean, that would be amazing. Yeah, you had to go through the whole act one, though. This is cool. That is cool. Every... So you're going to get uh, ads as you're playing it, but I think it only happens after you beat a level or something. Um, but yeah, regardless, Sonic Mania, everyone knows is amazing. I don't have to say anything else about it because I know how amazing it is. It's going to be amazing. Please stop being amazing, amazing. I'm glad it's amazing. I can't wait to play it. Same Z's. Same all right, well, you can play it now if you want. Okay. I don't have anything else. Nothing? No. Not even music? I could. We don't have to. I don't know if I want to. That's fine. I'm not going to force you. We should next week. It's a really good album. It is a really good album. You liked it? I half. <laughs> All right, we got to do this next week. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> do you have anything else? Uh, no, I'm good. Yeah, I, I kind of wanted to end on Sonic Mania. Yeah, that's the only way to end. the only end way to it. end. Yeah. Yeah. Plus the collector's edition. Oh, yeah. Are we going to? We should do a, an unboxing. Yeah. Totally can. All right. That's real cool. It's real cool. Real cool. Um. All right. I guess you can babble. Already? Thank you guys for watching and listening. Thank you for d listening and watching. And uh, we'll see you next week. Next week. Don't forget to subscribe to our, ch our <laughs> channel. S s subscribe. Subscribe. The, follow. The Keep Up VE. That's where all these vodcasts the are going. Find us at The Keep Up on Instagram. Keep Up HQ on Twitter. <laughs> Neither of us use Twitter, though. <laughs> it's a joke. We should. That one time you posted a picture of Groot and we got a million a people million. responding. That's I dream or for that. retweeting or whatever. Yeah, I dream for that. I don't know how that works. Uh, You know, you just got to retwiddle. Why does it say no save mode? Because uh, you beat it like originally. That's but how you do it? Well, I mean, no save mode. If it, the game won't save, if you die too many times. Or oh. you have to beat it in one sitting like you were supposed to. I see. All right. Uh, well, Brett does that. Um, have you guys ever thought that if you flick a flicka, are you really riding a horse? Or is the horse riding you? I'm not sure if Flicka is really the horse you want to believe. Like if you if you if you flick, Brett died, but he's not Flicka, so that's fine. You died. That was like five seconds. Great, great. This is. I'm just gonna end babble now. That ba babbly babbly wah. This is this. Hey, look, it's an eclipse. Wah 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 wah. Wah 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 It won't focus. Wah da 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 da. Oh great, the fidget spinner. Guys, this is the worst podcast ever. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Thanks for being here.